Fishing pocket water is all about finding seams. But before we dive into that, I want to define what a pocket is so that we're all working off the same definitions here. A pocket is formed when water goes around a large obstruction in the river. Typically, that's a rock. Take a look at the water behind me. How many pockets do you see in that stuff? As water passes around a rock, the regular current of the river is interrupted, and that interruption forms multiple pockets. Water in these pockets moves slower than water outside of the pockets, which makes them ideal places for trout to hang out. All right, we know what a pocket is, and I told you that seams are really important, but where exactly in that pocket are fish gonna hang out? Let's take a closer look. There are five different spots within pocket water where fish are likely to hang out. And Alex made a ton of great graphics to help us understand these. So let's take a look at each one of them in detail. Spot number one would be in front of the rock, or if it's any other kind of obstruction, it could be in front of that too. But for the purposes of this whole video, we're going to assume that the obstruction creating our pockets is a rock. So you can look in front of the rock because there's actually a little cushion of softer water. It's hard to see there, but it's a great place for trout to hang out and snag food as it whizzes by them on either side. Spot number two is side seams. As water flows around the rock, it creates friction. That friction creates two pretty distinct seams that surround the pocket itself. Fish really like to hang out on those seams because it's a transition point between fast and slow water. And remember how much fish love to hang out at transition points? It's one of their favorite places to be. It's easy for fish to sit in these transition points, in these seams, and snack on food that goes by in the fast current without spending too much energy. Spot number three is the pocket. The pocket is the easiest part of the water to identify. It's all the slow moving water. Usually, it's a little bit too slow for fish to hang out directly in, but I don't like to pass up a drift or two right in the middle of the pocket. Spot number four is the Y. The Y is formed where the two side seams join back together beneath the pocket. With two seams coming back together, there's a lot of turbulence at the Y. Water gets pushed in all sorts of directions, which makes feeding a tough proposition. However, the great thing about the Y is that it creates arguably the best part of the entire pocket itself, which is the tail out. The tail out is where the two arms of the Y join back together, come back into one bigger current seam and begins to flow back down into the river. Thanks to all of the turbulence at the Y junction, the tail out is moving substantially slower than all the water surrounding it. The water kind of crashes into itself and slows it down a little bit. The tail out's actually a really slight seam, and as we're now aware, seams are a fantastic place to look for fish. The tail out is usually home to a few good fish, and it is always worth fishing. Man, I need a snack after all that information. That was a ton. But now that we understand what a pocket is and where the fish are likely to hang out, we could talk about how you actually want to go about fishing these things. And to help you fish pocket water effectively, I've got three tips I'm gonna share with you. Tip number one is getting close. When you get close to the pocket, you're able to get the best presentation possible. Drag is one of the biggest potential problems that you're gonna face when you're fishing pocket water. You're dealing with so many different currents and it's such a tiny little area that drag is really tough to avoid. Your drifts end up being really short in pocket water as a result of that. The best way to avoid this drag, in my experience, is by high sticking as much as possible. Keep as much of your fly line and even your leader off the water as you possibly can. We've gone over high sticking before and if you haven't seen that video, we'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, to make sure that this point is really driven home, I want you all to consider this. There is zero sense of personal space when it comes to fish and pocket water. I want you to square up on that stuff like it just took your place in line at the DMV. You wouldn't stand for that crap, would you? No, you'd get right up there and confront that person. 
you need to do the same thing to the pocket water. Tip number two ties directly in to tip number one because with all of the different currents going on in pocket water, it's kind of tough to get that drag free drift. And one way that you're able to do that is to keep all of your flies in the same current. If I make a cast like this, my flies and indicator are all gonna be in different currents. I'll have maybe a second, if I'm lucky, of good drift before all those currents start dragging my flies and indicator all over the place. But if I make a cast like this, my flies and indicator line up real nice, eliminating most of the potential for drag. I referred to flies here and I talked about using indicators. The rig that you use doesn't really matter. You just wanna make sure that the entire rig lands in the same current. Tip number three, have an open mind, dude. You just wanna like not write anything off, bro. Like everything has potential, you know, like you might not think that that part of the pocket is like, you know, good, but you just don't know until you know, you know? What I mean by tip number three is pretty simple. Don't be afraid to fish every part of the pocket because fish will surprise you. They'll hold in places that just don't make a whole ton of sense, but hey, they're there. So you don't want to miss the opportunity to catch them. You'd be really surprised at just how big a fish I've actually caught out of some of the smallest pockets. Make sure you try and fish each part of the pocket and get your flies into any spot that might potentially hold a fish. We just learned a whole bunch of awesome information. Let's go put it into practice out on the water. So we just got done learning about all the places where you're likely to find trout holding in pockets. And I gave you three tips to help you fish pocket water more effectively. We're gonna take everything that we just learned and put it into practice here on one of my favorite streams. This stream is like 99% pocket water. So it's a great place to see all of the stuff that we just learned put into action. So something that's really fun and one of the reasons I love this little stream so much is the variety of bug life. Walk into the river here, we were kicking a bunch of caddis up through the bushes. There's yellow sallies, there's some, I think we saw some black stones kicking around too. So again, always make sure you're basing your fly choice on what you see, what's available to the fish. And for that reason, I've tied on a fairly big caddis up top and then I've got a Frenchie. Uh, as my dropper. I could probably even stand to size up the Frenchie. Might even be a little small, but we'll just keep fishing this for a minute and see. But I picked those bugs because if they're gonna come up and eat off the top, that caddis is a great little meal and it's hard to go wrong with a Frenchie. So first pocket I'm gonna work on, obviously is gonna be the seams here where we've got this calmer water. Very likely place for fish to be hanging out. So I've just, I've got a little caddis with a Frenchie underneath it. just. A uh, pretty simple dry dropper rig. And you're gonna see a lot of high sticking through here because it's very tight quarters. Remember one of those tips uh, for pocket water fishing is don't be afraid to get up close and personal with it, which is what I'm doing right here. So, run this through each of those seams, just looking to see if the fish are gonna be in there. I don't know if there's going to be fish in this pocket or not. It's very, I talk up pocket water a lot and for good reason, it's wonderful, but it's not like there's fish in every single pocket either. So you want to fish it good. You want to get a good presentation through it and then move on. You don't need to spend like half an hour on each pocket. So fish didn't eat in that one. We're going to move up to the next one. All right. Well, I'm gonna go kind of right down the middle of this pocket here and see what happens. One of the fun things about pocket water is it's relatively fast paced. Because like I said, you're gonna you're gonna fish through these and if the fish aren't really doing anything, it's just kind of move on. So it's a lot of fun in that regard. I might have a little bit of salad on my dropper. One thing that a lot of folks complain about on um, pocket water is 
that they feel like they're nymph if they're fishing with a dropper through it is either too deep and they're getting salad on every single cast, they're getting snagged on every cast, or it's too shallow and they don't think it's getting deep enough. Uh, I've always kind of erred on the side of I'd rather be snagging every other cast. If it's like every cast, you know, trim it a little bit, but if you know every third or fourth cast you hook up on the bottom, that dropper's right where it needs to be. There are no fish that want my little Frenchie in that pocket, so I'm gonna go over here to this one on my left. All right. Oh, <laughs> right at the tail out. There we go. I did not, oh, and he just popped off. I did not expect that one to happen. Uh, that'll happen a lot though. You get them right at the tail out sometimes like that. Just a, a little guy decided to get aggressive and eat it. So there was fish in that one. I was just about ready to move on, but he took it. So tons of fun. I bet there's more, let's keep fishing. Alex thinks there's fish in this pocket. I don't. Let's see who's right. I love being wrong. <laughs> that is why we love pocket water. That nice of a fish was hanging in that tiny, tiny water. That's beautiful. Look at that beautiful little brownie. I'd just like to let everyone know that I was correct and we're gonna count that fish towards my fish count today. How do you feel about that, Spencer? If I'm gonna be wrong, at least I'm wrong for a good reason. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. Well, after Alex proved me very wrong, uh, we'll see if I can catch any fish out of this pocket right here. interesting that the two fish that we've had today have been on the nymph there's so many bugs buzzing in the air i kind of expected a little bit of a dry fly bite but it, I, it might just be early enough in the day the fish aren't really looking up yet i i don't know some days there's just no way to tell and this is kind of a tough presentation here because you got those branches hanging right over it and my dropper keeps hanging up but we'll see what we get here All right, I think we're gonna move up and uh, this little run right here, right in front of me, that's looking prime. So with this run, uh, I mean, it's not like our pocket like we've been looking at, but wonderful piece of water, so I'm gonna fish it. Again, close to far. This seam on the left is closest to me. That stuff looks prime, but I need to hit this first. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cast right up through here first and see what happens. Kind of work my way closer to the seam. Usually there's not fish in like that dead water, but you never know. Well, I've caught fish in the dead water on this stream in particular, so it's always worth a cast or two into that stuff I've found. And as you see, I'm casting hardly any fly line. That's on purpose. You don't need it. We don't want any drag, especially in this kind of water where it's super, your drifts are so short that if they're dragging for any of it, the fish are gonna, oh, just got a little guy, I got interrupted, sorry. Let me just bend down and grab this little dude. Thank you for playing, buddy. Anyways, as I was saying, I'm not using a whole ton of line, 
I don't want drag on my drift. And the drifts are so short that if you do have drag on them, the fish are gonna wise up to that pretty quick. So your, your presentations need to be really solid so you don't turn the fish off of your flies. So it's tempting right now for me to fish all the way up to the top of this left side. But if I do that, there's a chance I could spook any fish that are hanging right here. So I'm gonna fish this stuff first, again, close to far, right? I'm fishing the stuff that's closest to me first and then working on what's furthest away. I'm gonna turn around, fish this stuff right here. Ooh, that was a good drift. That was a good drift, man. Where's the fish, man? All right, this one's really kind of interesting. You can see the Y for it is like all the way at that tail. So we've got two long seams to hit. So we'll hit those. Just see, this is a good looking piece of water. I'd be surprised if something doesn't want to play. These seams are pretty wide right here too. Oh, stick fish. Gotta love the stick fish, man. I haven't caught one of those in forever. There we go, there's the fish. Right there. Beautiful work. Did a little cutty. I'm gonna have to go on downstream here. It is a nice little cutty, beautiful fish. Boom, nice. Hopefully after going through this, you can understand why I love fishing pocket water so much. In our next video, we're gonna tackle the food factory of the river where fish just go nuts. Like me back in college at the food court right after payday.